Hi, good afternoon. I'm Bella, and my company is called Bella Networking. I'm really delighted to be here this afternoon, and, and I'm going to be talking about essential networking for business and actually for your own personal goals and career development goals. It's actually been a goal of mine and a dream of mine to actually stand here and present to you lovely students at University of Greenwich. Why? Because I saw that there was a need for students who are studying business or marketing or accountancy, any business related degree, that networking isn't actually taught within your syllabus. And when I, when I was at Greenwich University, there was no mention of networking, so I actually achieved that goal. And to let you know, I'm here standing here through networking. I wanted to reach out to a university, and actually by attending a networking event, I saw a few of your students at a Biscotti networking event who told me they were students. I explained to them what my goal was, what I wanted to do, and I reached out to them, and I said, would you mind making an introduction to the course leader? And they did, who was Patrick. And through a few emails, I achieved my goal being here today, um, doing this delivery of a networking syllabus. There will be questions, but if you can leave them to the end, I'll be happy to answer them for you. So let me just tell you a little bit about me. So yes, I was a university graduate. I graduated in year 2000 and I did a BA in marketing and something one of my lecturers said to me, she said, Bella, you're really good at marketing, but one of the ways to become even more successful is to specialize. So that's what I did. I specialized in direct marketing and then specialized even further into database and campaign. My highest point throughout my career was working at T-Mobile where I worked in the database and campaigns department of the marketing team and I worked on a database which held 30 plus million records. I've achieved quite a lot of networking success for my business and my business has two halves. We offer networking training and we offer networking events. And some of the achievements that I have, firstly I am a columnist for the Epoch Times and I write a networking column every week. And also in September, I went to New York and spent one month doing an international research trip and I compared the differences how businesses in New York compared to how they network in London. And my biggest media achievement was that I actually wrote an article about my journey and the research I did and when I got the newspaper delivered at home I saw that actually my face was next to Bill Gates and I felt wow you know the power of people and the power of networking I've had other media uh, uh, achievements. I've been in a number of online and offline publications. I've been in Bartercard, who's written an article about me. I've been in Fab magazine. Um, do any of you know this lady who's on the front of Fab magazine? Her name is Penny Power, and I know everybody here knows about Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, right? This lady and her husband were the first entrepreneurs to launch a social media site called eAcademy. Anybody know eAcademy? No, there you go. I've also had the fortunate opportunity to be interviewed on the radio, 104.5 FM, and actually I had two interviews on that radio station and I was the first business owner to be asked back for another interview. So I was really, really happy about that. So before I talk about, well, what's networking, I think let's take a step further and let's just identify why network. There is a number of reasons why we should network and it's not just for business reasons. Networking can actually help you for searching a job, particularly if you're a graduate and you want to uh, 
practice your uh, degree that you specialised in and also it's good for career development. So for example, if you're in your current job and you want to go up the ladder, it's really important to do internal networking as well because sometimes with the power of people, you can actually be informed about job opportunities before they even go on an internal website. And of course, running a business, networking is key because it gives you an opportunity to actually achieve um, marketing goals, sale goals and leads generation. So what is networking? The first thing to understand about networking is people by people. And why is that? Networking does have a great social advantage. And the advantage of that is within networking, when you are talking with a delegate to influence a sale, they actually buy you before they buy your services. So it's really important to bear in mind that trust and likability is very important when networking. You're actually on show and you're buying yourself. And image is really important when you're networking and I'm going to be talking about that a little bit later. There's a few misconceptions about networking. One is, oh, it's a selling tool. And the other misconception I get with a lot of my clients is when they attend networking events, they expect the next day to be inflicted with sales calls. Really, really does not work like that. Networking is a long-term goal. And the more you put in, the more you put out. It's a bit like losing weight. You know, we all know about the fad diet. You give up carbs, you lose weight, then what happens? A few months later, you put weight back on, right? And I'm sure that you may or may not know the best way to lose weight is over time. Yeah? Okay. Networking also has a magical tool about building relationships. And actually, the definition of networking is about building relationships long term for sustainable growth for both parties to have mutual benefits. Networking is important because you need to continuously build a network. And networking can take place in different forms. You can have open networking. And open networking usually, can, usually goes with a process where an event organiser would hire a venue and it's a type of a marketplace. And you can have a speaker or not a speaker. And there's not so much a structure. And open networking tends to have 60, 70 people attending. You can attend closed networking events, and closed networking events are very much where they're capped. Usually they may have 20 to 30 people, and they may be around a boardroom which are more structured, and also the likelihood of having a speaker. If you here have heard of speed dating, put your hands up because you're going to do some work as well as I'm doing some work, right. So you can also do speed networking and it works in a similar format where you would have a row of delegates side by side and they spend about two, or four, two, or three, two to five minutes with each other um, before swapping over. This is actually really popular in um, the SME and business world because get the opportunity to meet a number of delegates in a small matter of time. Now with networking it's really important to understand that networking can happen anywhere and everywhere and you always need to be prepared and I'm always trying to promote always have your business cards ready. I'll give you an example. When I was in America my key industry are law firms. I had a meeting interviewing um, a client for my research and I was actually quite early. And it was in a fabulous Italian restaurant and I noticed they sold pizza slices. And I'm a bit of a foodie, I love my food. And these pizza slices were to die for, I thought I was in Italy. So I was stuffing my face and lo and behold me, there was a lady sitting next to me and we got chatting. Would you believe she was a director of one of the largest law firms in New York? So thereby you have to be ready and available for network because you can happen anytime and opportunities can happen without you even knowing it. So I mentioned that one of the misconceptions about networking that it's selling and that's not true. 
Networking is actually forms part of a marketing tool. How many business students here will be um, attending a marketing model or be uh, doing a marketing subject later in the year or next year? Some of you? No? Okay. The reason why networking is a marketing tool is because it gives you the opportunity to create brand awareness. Now, I'd like to share something with you. When I started my business, I have a number of businesses, and one of which is Rare World, an image consultancy. When I started my business, I had zero marketing budget. I had no money for advertising. And then I found out about networking. But what my long-term goal was, I wanted to have brand awareness. I wanted people to know my name. I wanted people to buy me before my service. Would you believe with all the media achievements I've had to this date, and I've been working as a networking specialist for over five years, I've never had a website. So the power of using networking for brand awareness can actually have leaps and bounds. Networking is also great for market research. For example, I have a pampering business and before I was ready to launch and go live, I really needed to get some feedback you know, from business owners on what they think. So I actually use networking as a form of market research to hear if my ideas were feasible and also prices as well. Networking is really, really great to learn about your industry. I mentioned that law firms are to actually go to events where I know law such as seminars, and also so that I can learn about industry trends. Now, the other thing about networking is, is it's great for personal development. A lot of people think that I came out of the sky becoming a networking guru. But some people don't realise that when I go home and I take off my work clothes and I'm resting, I'm actually a hermit at home because I'm an only child. I don't want to talk to anybody. If people knock on the door, I don't answer. If people ring, I don't answer. If they phone me, I don't want to answer. But networking is actually a brilliant way for you to boost your confidence. And it's a brilliant way for your communication as well and also to get business ready. So, building a, building a network. Sorry. Building a network, one of the things that you need to think about when you're building a network is quantity or quality. When I first started my business, my goal was to reach as many people as possible. Now, that was fine for the first few years, but as my business model was refined, I refined my goals as well, so that it was more quality-based as well. So when you're networking, you need to think about who do you need to reach, who are your target audience. In your case, being graduate, it may be that you need to reach recruitment agencies, graduate agencies, or HR departments. So it's really important that when you're networking, have a goal. Say to yourself, right, I want to meet um, X amount of recruitment agencies at this event or I want to reach X amount of employers because that really helps you along the way. And when you're building your network, you need to think about different categories. One being gatekeepers. What do you think I would mean by gatekeepers? Anybody? Anybody? Gatekeepers are those that can open doors for you. A bit similar to what Cordelia has said, actually, during her work experience, when she had certain questions, she didn't know where to reach, she was job hunting, and she reached out to people. Gatekeepers are a magical tool for you. So, for example, when you're networking, be it in your case if you're looking for graduate opportunities, sometimes it's not just the direct end person that would be a result. You never know that another person could actually recommend somebody that they know that has a job opportunity, or it may be a business that started and they also have an opportunity. So you never know who could be a gatekeeper, so it's very important also great to have industry experts so you're actually keeping up to date with trends.
to have inspiring contacts. And what do I mean by inspiring contacts? Running a business, as well as it is glamorous and we hear about the entrepreneurship, sometimes it can be very, very hard work. So I do something called a five a day, which I'm going to mention a bit later on. Inspiring contacts for me are those that have a gleaming positive approach and a positive character. And sometimes when business is hard and you need to share problems, Problems, these are the people that you can call. I also have something called 999 contacts. Now these are people where if you're stuck and you need help and you don't know what to do. I'll give you an example. Now I don't know the last time I used Google to search for an industry or I don't know the last time I used the yellow pages. I tend to first point of call is my network or my database. There was one evening I was filling in a PPI form. Is everybody familiar? Do you know what a PPI form is when you can actually um, you send off an application and have some of your money refunded and I was up against a deadline because I had to give it in nine o'clock the next day and there was a question which I was really stumbling on and I knew that this question could be the make or break whether they say yes or no and it was something like 10 o'clock at night so I thought my god what am I going to do I shouldn't have left it for so long so I called somebody in my network who actually is a debt collector and he actually gave me some brilliant advice so I was able to achieve that Networking questions. So you've made the effort to actually network. You've decided which networking event to go to. But what do you do when you're in the room? Now, the art of conversation is very, very important because this is where you will start to build your relationship with new delegates. And one of the important things is, is to create an elevator pitch. Now. With an elevator pitch, it should be something that's 60 seconds or if you can cut it in half, 30 seconds. So my elevator pitch goes something like this. I would be asked, what are my business services? I would say, I help law firms to achieve their sales target by connecting them with business owners, SMEs or entrepreneurs so that they can grow their network. By saying that I've made it very clear who my target audience are, how do I help them, why do I help them and the results that they get. Now with your elevator pitch you need to be prepared and you need to practice, practice, practice. A lot of people in my network would say oh, I don't have time. One of the best times to practice your elevator pitch is actually in the shower. The power of image. Now, I'm sure you've all heard this expression before. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. Now, I'm sure, have you heard this expression from your grandparents or from your family that you should always wear a clean pair of knickers in case you get run over, you know, if the ambulance catch you? Have you, any of you heard of that saying? Yeah. Image network is really important as well as in business. The moment you step into a networking event, your image is key, your image is viewed, and you have to be prepared. In the same way that you get your Oyster card ready before you leave home, your keys, your wallet, you need to think about your image because it only takes 30 seconds for a delegate to actually make a judgment about you. And you want to be remembered in a positive way. If there's anything to take away tonight, just think about this. If you want to be seen and viewed as successful, you need to look successful. The last slide is about following up. And this, I would say, probably equates to 60% of networking. And this is where success really takes place. Let me ask you something. I handed my business card. How many students here have a business card? No. Ah, fantastic. Now, I'm sure you'll probably... <laughs> oh. you, would, you, you would have been the prime example. Now, I'm sure you're all thinking, business card, business card, why should I have a business card? Why should I have a card. You need to be always ready. One of the reasons that some students say to me, I don't have a business card, I don't have a job title. Well, you do. 
you're a business graduate, you are a graduate at university. On your business card, that's a job title you can put, especially if there's a specialist subject that you're specialising in, international languages, accountancy. By saying that you're a business student resonates to a lot of business owners. It would resonate a lot to me because I encourage students to come to my networking event. And imagine how you would stand out in the crowd if you go to graduate fairs or recruitment fairs and you actually give your car to a recruitment consultant. So one thing I would just like to say is do make a point of trying to get a business card and they're actually quite cheap. You can actually get business cards for about 99p or £2 at Vistacard. One thing I would like to say though is when you get loads of business cards, do treat them as gold, categorise them and um, have a category of hot, warm or cold. And also, where you can, try to do a five-day, five-call a day, whereby people that you've met in your network to keep building those relationships, give them a call. Also, maximise social media. So if you received a card, one of the great things to do is to have a look at LinkedIn and connect with them. for me to tell them about the opportunity or do you want to? Can I do that at the very Yeah, end? okay. That's actually the end of my presentation. Patrick, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Patrick's going to give you a bit more details about the opportunity I have, okay. so thank you. Thank you. Would you mind just okay. Folks, we have a couple of minutes for some questions. Uh, anything you like, it may have been our guest's experience at this university or it might have been their experience at Sydney. Has anyone got any? Questions Shy, aren't they? How many people here have networked or attended a networking event? And what was your experience? Were there any um, challenges that you had? <laughs> 